Welcome to our webinar, How to Create Standout PR. Now, I'm Marshall Cousins, the flowery one. Um, I'm hosting the next uh, 45 minutes in which we are going to discuss, you guessed it, um, great PR. Um, something that I know the learning, corporate learning industry grapples with a lot. Um, so, I'm going to just explain a couple of things. We want to do everything in chat. So the aim of this session, and it will be an hour max, um, is just to go through a few topics um, and really have a conversation with everyone who's on the call. So Phil, we'd like you to get your questions answered if you have any burning questions about PR. Um, so hopefully you've all found the chat. It looks like some of you have. Um, so let's just use the chat panel for that. Um, and now we have, as you can see on camera, and thank you panelists for being on camera, um, our fantastic panel, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So I'll start first with Lucy George. Lucy, tell us <coughs> briefly about who you are, what you do, and your very intriguing title. Well, thank you very much. Yes, um, I'm Lucy George. I call myself the mayor of Wordville. I'm the director of the company. And um, basically, I, I started my life in the media and then moved into marketing and PR. Um, I was head of comms for Parity. So I think I saw maybe a couple of people I recognize on there, um, on your list of attendees. And um, then I went to work for a, PR, a couple of PR agencies and then I started my own, which was Wordville. So that's a little bit about me. Great, thank you. And Rob, introduce yourself. Everybody, uh, Rob Clark, founder and editor of uh, Learning News. We report on the learning industry and carry news announcements from learning providers. Like Lucy, my background in the way back was also in, in IT. Uh, one of Parity's competitors, <laughs> going back to the 1980s. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, I've worked on, on the vendor side as well. Great, thank you. And finally, John. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm John Kennard. I'm editor of Training Journal TJ uh, Online. Um, my co work, my, co my colleague, my line manager, Debbie, takes care of the magazine. I take care of everything else, essentially, all the digital content. So I publish all the stories, uh, the podcasts, the videos, all of that. And uh, I get a lot of emails from PRs, and some of them are good, and we'll tell you why. Brilliant. So, fantastic. thank you, panel, for your time today. And we get a really good rounded view of PR. You know, we've got the PR agency, a learning newswire, and training journal. So, I, I think that makes for a, quite an interesting, well triangulated conversation, I'm hoping. Um, so, what we're going to cover today, what we've what decided to do um, is go through these five areas. And at the end, we'll discuss each one separately, and then we can answer any questions that crop up, um, and then we can go through it like that, and we can deal with any questions at the end. If you have any questions as anyone's speaking, um, everyone can keep an eye on the chat, so we can, you know, maybe we'll just cover the questions as we go. Um, let's, but we'll, we'll see how that rolls. So we're just going to look at the role of PR in 2019. Um, what is it and why do it? What makes great PR? Tips for producing great PR on a budget, bad practices to avoid, and first steps for creating a great campaign. So, what I'm going to do is this. Um, firstly, I'm going to quickly ask you what would make this a successful webinar. If you could just let us have a quick, ref quickly let us know. Um, in the chat because we would like to be able to get to the end of this and say we have delivered on what you would like to see um so top tips mm -hmm. oh yeah learning campaigns are just good ideas so a lot of this would be external but i someone who, Post on Twitter um, last night a question about whether is this is for uh, is this for internal L and D teams, um, and that's maybe something we might want to discuss during this as well because there is a challenge 
getting learning out into the organization. Um, so there might be some stuff that we could borrow and, uh, you know, kind of suggest as ways of doing that too. Um, okay, so we've got some tips um, and good ideas. I think, we, I think we'll come up with those hopefully. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the panel to share their thinking and I'm going to type some of the answers um, as they speak. So um, at the end of this, we should have some slides that have got some notes on them. So I'll, I'll let the panel do the talking and I'll be sitting here doing that if that's all right with everyone. Um, so the, the, the audio is pretty bad. Um, so that's okay. Luckily, Jim is a web oh. webinar expert. Mm -hmm. So what we could do, panelists, is if we yeah, we can uh, mute. I'll yeah, mute until we speak, and just remember to um, switch your microphone on when you get going. So um, thanks, Joe. That's really good of you. Um, oh, that's much better. Right. Okay. So. Role of PR in 2019, what is it and why do it? Lucy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to unmute myself for that because I'd like to kick off. Um, Go on then. You know, PR in the job description, right? <laughs> okay, what is it? It's uh, basically, I think I'd, I'd like to just say that whether you do it or not, PR is happening with or without you. So a perception of your business is uh, being created by the things you do and, um, and whether someone is necessarily writing about you in the press or tweeting things about you um, or even putting something on, you know, glass door. This is all to do with the reputation of your organization. So um, PR serves, you know, a couple of good purposes. Why do it? One, to uh, make sure that you are being known for the things you want to be known for and um, to address any of the um, maybe any negatives. And then also to drive in new business, you know, to drive in partnerships, um, to be in the right place so that uh, you're building a kind of comfort factor with your prospects. So that's, that's why you do it. It needs to pay for itself, ultimately. It is not free advertising. Um, I charge money. So, yeah, it's not free advertising. It can be quite expensive. Great. Okay. So who would like to add to that? John? Hello. Yes. Um, I can't put it much better than Lucy did, to be honest. And that's a really, really good point that, um, that it's happening with or without you. So you, you, it's almost your duty to control the conversation in some aspects. Um, I think it's an essential part of the mix for brands to promote their uh, narrative, their products, um, their whatever their drive is, whatever their marketing goals are for the year and, and beyond or for the, for the quarter. Uh, it's an essential part of what you do alongside other things, other types of advertising, but PR is absolutely crucial to getting that message out there. And there are some, there are good and bad ways of doing it, but more so than ever in 2019, it is an essential part of what you do. That's what I'd say. Great. Rob, what would you add to that? Yeah, well, <clears throat> all of the above. Um, so rather than go over all of the above, I think I'll just add to that. Um, it's about it's about mind share. Think about when people are in buying mode. They're only in buying mode for a short amount of time. If you're buying a new camera, you might be in buying mode for a couple of hours every five years. Um, the same in the learning industry. People are actually in buying mode for a short amount of time. Yet PR can help you build those relationships and keep in contact, keep in communication, make sure your values are coming across when people aren't in buying mode. That's great. Okay, excellent. I mean, if I could just add one last little thing before we move on to the next question. Um, I think that, and this is with respect to people who manage advertising, there's, there's become less faith in, in advertising overall. And people are really looking for shareable content, things that um, seem to have some kind of endorsement. And the beauty of having an article written about you is that that journalist is providing some kind of endorsement um, as an outsider's view. So it has, a hu it has much more impact than, let's say, just put it, like, getting a full page that says, we're great, come and buy our training courses or whatever. Um, it's, you know, and then also it's something that you can then share and then you get involved in a discussion, either through social media 
or just directly between you and the publication. Yeah, that's interesting. So you're, you're basically looking to a third party, someone who's got some reputation to actually kind of back you a bit uh, and, and add to your, yeah. your story, yeah? Yeah, and I mean, like, like any profession, you know, there's, there's a hierarchy. So, you know, if we're lucky enough to get training journal and learning news to speak about the company, um, we're thrilled. But, you know, um, so it's, you know, to do with relevance, to do with the uh, credibility of the particular journalist who's writing about you. And, um, and you know, and you're, you, you're aiming as high as you can go. Yeah. Okay. So that's, and I think, you know, people in the chat, it looks like everyone's kind of agreeing with that. I don't, I'm not sure that we've missed anything there. I think it sounds to me like it's actually in a, in a kind of a time when it's so easy to, to, to put stuff out there. This may be a channel of activity that actually, you know, ranks more highly than other forms of content um, sharing. Yeah. So it's, it's a, that, so it's higher quality um, in that sense. Um, so it's about reputation. There's just one question here from Joe. Is it about reputation management? Are we, is that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's a whole other seminar that we could talk about in relation to if anything goes wrong and crisis management. Yeah. So is managed through this way. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's about managing the brand. It's, you know, it's putting the, the words out there as well as any imagery you've got going on. So yeah, yeah. she's right. Great. So if there's anyone got any other questions, I don't think, I think we've, um maybe we've covered that um that's brilliant so i'm just catching up with my typing excellent right so straight into number two now here's the alchemy bit so okay we we, we started with you lucy but what i'll do this time is i'll i'll, I'll share it round. i don't want, don't want to have any favorites um so rob learning news you know you're a newswire um, you see a lot of PR, um, so which is why it's great to have you here today. So, what's your take on what makes great PR? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I think I want to sort of. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about you know brands and message and reputation and so on. I think the first thing I'd like to say about great PR is it's when it's led by PR people, but it involves the whole organisation. It's not just a quick isolated promo campaign. Rather, great PR is the organisation. It's transparent, it's authentic, it's real. Um, I think when PR is just a quick promo campaign, I think we're starting to see through that. We have been for a while. Um, it can have the opposite effect. People get cynical when they just see the experience real PR. Um, I think yeah. it's when it's real and authentic. Uh, so I want to sort of front all, all what we say about PR with that, really. Um, but you know, either side of that, I think I think we do need a bit of the wow factor as well. You know, if we think about possibly the greatest PR stunt in the last ten years, probably Felix Baumgartner, or um, you know, uh, uh, the Tesla sports car going through space. You know, these are man, Rob, PR. you're expecting a lot from us. You know, <laughs> they had quite a big budget there. <laughs> Can I just chip in on that? They do, they do. But I think what I'm trying to say is, you know, we do need a bit of the wow factor. Um, and it is possible in the learning industry. Lucy, last year, when you did the PR for the cyber security launches, you did it at Bletchley Park. So we were there doing the interviews. It wasn't just me who was there. The BBC were there as well. So you know, that's a bit of wow factor, you know. Um, and I think on a budget as well, because their partner was um, involved there. So maybe it didn't cost them that much. But So we did have the wow factor. And there were other examples. So, yeah, a bit of, a, a bit of wow factor. Right. So, go on then, Lucy. Let's... Okay, well, listen, I, I do have, um, I can't believe I'm saying this in front of two journalists as well, because I'm really giving away trade secrets here. But these are what I think makes great PR. Um, yes to Rob on the wow factor. And I'd say that, uh, you know, try to be original. Okay, try to do something that's original. But these, these are really the key things. Okay, the first is to link in some way to the news, to link in some way to trends that are going on. You know, something that's happening to your company might be very interesting, but it could just feel like a moving house notice if it's not if it's not reconnected really to the industry in some way. So be informed about what's going on. 
and we can talk about that a bit later when we start talking about some of the you know uh, key tips maybe for, for next steps yeah. um have an opinion uh you know if there is if you're aware of something that's going on in the industry make sure you're not just being wishy-washy about it if you're putting forward some of your best people to talk in interviews um you know practice with them make sure they're saying something that can be uh quoted the most frustrating thing for a pr agent is not uh not getting an interview it's getting an interview and then not getting coverage because the because the uh spokesperson said nothing of interest or nothing that could be used so have evidence have statistics have an opinion you know be someone that a journalist wants to talk to because they say oh yeah we're getting an insight here rather than just oh they're releasing uh, you know ITIL four training courses or whatever yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, I, I could go on and on, but I'd say the other thing is trying to be forward looking. Again, um, if you're saying something that everybody else has said, then there's no reason for the journalist to write about it. You know, the press is, it's about the news, right? So if you have something that you want to say, think about how that might play out next year and internationally. Um, so you're trying to think about, you just think slightly bigger than your original announcement, perhaps. Uh, so, you know, when you mentioned about Bletchley Park, we're talking about cybersecurity, skills shortages, hacking. You know, there's some really big themes there. And that's when you can draw in the likes of the BBC, rather than just actually we're doing an apprenticeship launch, which won't be ready for six months. I mean, that's what we were actually launching. So, um, you know, which basically isn't news. But by tying it to, to uh, recent hacking scandals, etc., we were able to suddenly make it newsy. Yeah, brilliant. John, what would you add to that? So, um, yeah, excellent uh, points from uh, Lucy and Rob. And uh, I would just say, know your audience um, and what they respond to. Be unique as well. I mean, this is kind of inside already, but uh, I would also say if, if I get a lot of um, press releases and PR is a lot more than just press releases. But I would also say be quite tenacious about it. Um, if you follow up, it's, it is very much appreciated by editors if you do follow up, I would say, because most people don't, um, they don't care. Uh, and and it's, it's very much a blanket operation for, for most people. So it is noticed when uh, you're kind, you're specific, and you know your audience, and you follow up with people. Um, that's to me what makes great PR and, and will get you uh, noticed and will get you coverage. Yeah, so, so a couple of comments here. One from Joe about the, uh, the tea bag. Um, is, is that marketing or is that PR? Yeah, yeah it's a lot of blurred, but I think, I think you've, um, I think tea bag's really sweet and thank you for that. I might pinch it. As a, um, <laughs> but I think if it would necessarily, some of the difficult things about sending material to just actual objects to journalists is tricky as as you can imagine uh you know you can't get anything to a journalist that doesn't know you uh you know they might think it's anthrax or something yeah. so uh, that's probably a little bit more marketing on on colin's um uh point about exclusivity uh this is a really interesting one there are two schools of thought i happen to not like exclusives okay now this um it would have to be it would have to be some it would have to be news night do you know what i mean because the the First of all, that uh, some journalists shy away from uh, exclusives as well, because it, just as you say, it puts too much pressure on them and they don't know what other stories are gonna come up. Secondly, um, you, you're, the only reason to do an exclusive is because the press, you know, the outlet is so important that every other journalist is gonna pick up on it. So, um, you know, I tell you who's really good at this, are the Beckhams, very, very good at it. They'll do one cover, okay, and they'll do Vogue whatever, right? And then everybody else picks up on that, that's fine. But I think that if you're really looking for um, wide coverage, I find exclusives don't really work in the client's favor. And ultimately, uh, although I, I, you know, I stand between the client and the press, it's a client who's, who's uh, I've got their best interests at heart. Yeah, so I think that's very interesting. And I think there's a couple of points that have just been picked up that I'd like to pick up on. Firstly, you know, Lucy, you're doing an apprenticeship program and, and yet you, you choose to create a lot of buzz around it by taking it somewhere that's really interesting. Um, 
what else? I mean, it was in terms of standing out, I'm, I'm like John and uh, Rob, you see a lot of, I know, I don't want to just single out the press release as a way of introducing PR to um, you two, but I mean, what there's, there's the, the industry is awash with press releases. And it looks to me like some of this advice right now is not really, I mean, do you see much of this in press releases that you get? Um, because it just feels to me like I don't tend to see that idea of bigger news trends being linked to and, and, and that kind of stuff. What, Rob, do you see much of that happening? Not enough, no. Um, uh, I, I think possibly, you know, I, I was gonna come on to that when we talked about tips on a PR okay. um, being on a budget, but um, I think being prepared. Um, I mean, there's the great example in the, 90, in the Tony Blair's Labour government in the 1990s, we had this thing called the PR grid which was a, an annual calendar of everything they felt was important, not just political events, but yeah, celebrities' birthdays, economic reports when they were coming out. Um, they had everything in there that they felt they could make news around. Um, so obviously, you know, bringing that back, back to the learning industry, we do know what's happening for the year ahead. You know, we, we know when the analysts' research reports are coming out. We know the programmes for the conferences ahead of time. They're likely to be news, newsworthy. Um, you know, we know what the media outlets editorial calendars are. John back me up here, but I expect somewhere on your website there might be something that says what you're doing in the next uh, few months. Um, you know, we know that um, <clears throat> we know this this summer there's the Women in Learning campaign. That's possibly the, the Women in Learning um, campaigns event, I should say, um, in London. We know that's possibly going to be the biggest news event in the learning industry this summer. So we know what's coming up. So I'd say be prepared. Um, it doesn't take much. Create, create your own grid, your own version of Labour's grid, so you know what's uh, you know what's coming up. Um, that's great, Rob. Also, can you? Um, we just someone's just been saying that you, you sound a bit faint. So if you could either get close to the mic or turn up the mic a bit, um, that might help. Thank you, um, John. Is there anything you would add to that? You get lots of PR. Can you uh, repeat the question? Martin, sorry, I, I, I'm not sure. I think I may have added everything uh, you asked for, but um, anything specifically. Well, what am I seeing, do you mean, in press yeah. releases I receive? Yeah, no, I was just thinking, obviously you get a lot of press releases. And, mm. you know, having a look at this list of what makes great PR, do you see much of that happening currently? Or is there, a, you know, a, a lot of room for improvement? Well, we can come to this when we talk about things to avoid. Um, okay. Because there's a lot of... Uh, I can say quite a lot about that, but we don't want to just, um, as we were saying when we were briefing this, we don't want, or I don't want this to be a webinar based entirely on bad practice, but there's a lot of it. Um, okay. I, I mean, I see, I see some, some good press releases and some bad ones. That's a, that's a fence sitting answer, but um, I don't personally think that press releases that are tied too much to news events are particularly good necessarily not for learning um if it's an announcement around the apprenticeship levy if, if it's if the the winter the, sorry the autumn statement or the budget is has something to do with say small businesses and uh training or something like that then obviously it's useful but um i will talk in the bit about bad practice about what i think about the way press releases are angled but no i don't tend to see too much of it and but when i do i don't necessarily think it's useful but i'll go back again and say Okay. If it's unique, if it's a unique angle on something uh, that I've not seen before uh, that stands out, then it will take, I will take notice of it. Yeah, oh, that's great. I think they're really good, um, really good. Perhaps I can just chip in not to have the last word or anything, um, but uh, I barely use press releases. And I think that um, probably John and Rob, I have contacted both of you pitching stuff, but these, um, I don't find press releases are very effective because you're basically talking about one angle for every single publication. Um, now, some of my clients insist on it, some of them are corporations, and they have you know, these best practice, rule, best practice rules where they have to send one thing out at a certain point of the day, et cetera. But ultimately, um, it's becoming less and less uh, an effective way of getting um, coverage. Okay, that's interesting. Can I have something else, Can I have something else Martin? Yep. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, Lucy. I'll, I'll also say that, um, yeah, let's move away from talking about press releases because PR, certainly for me, is a lot more than that as well. And it's about um, companies getting in touch with unique angles for stories uh, that aren't press related. They're more opinion pieces or features, for example. Yeah. And, and this is where the unique nature of it comes in. And if you've got a good slant on something like, say, a buzzword such as AI or something like that, which yeah. we hear a lot about, but we, we rarely hear the practicalities of it but we do hear a lot of kind of very high level uh, conversation about how it's going to revolutionize L and D. If you can prove to me that that is the case and you've got a unique angle about um, that as a subject, then I'll definitely sit up and take notice. So, so yes, we'll, we'll move away from press releases, but definitely for features and opinion pieces, um, it is very important. PR is absolutely essential, I think. Great. Excellent. So I think we've had some questions posed, which I think we've, um answered so let's let's move on so tips for producing great pr and i i we stuck on the end on a budget so um we want mass appeal answers here i think um rather than tesla cars in space although i thought that's a great <laughs> that's a great example <laughs> it's really good however um if you've got slightly less money to play with um what would you do so I feel like I should go to John, if you'll forgive me. I feel like I should go to Lucy on this one first. Um, as people pay you to do PR. Exactly that. So exactly I think that. Yes. It, it would be right to get your insights at this point. Okay. Um, I would say that, and this is particularly when you're talking about a small budget or you're talking about a company that's got very little, very low um, reputation, like, uh, awareness people you know, you're you're small you're a, you're a challenger rather than um, you know a big name yeah so basically you've got to try and do what others can't do right and that sometimes is to do with the availability of your of your CEO managing director key people your customers for example yeah um, so you can you can get coverage where some of the big big um, learning providers can't because you can say I have a learning ma a learning manager who can come and talk to you about the program yeah or and or I can speak you can speak today to our managing director I can turn this around in 45 minutes yeah, yeah. and you can because because the journalists will have deadlines and they've got other work to do if you can get if they can yeah. get it wrapped up then great so access is, the, is one thing that um, without a budget uh, you just need to, you know, you just need to get the company all lined up and make sure that whoever it is you're putting out as the spokespeople are ready, as as Rob said. Um, the other thing is uh, insight. So, and I know these seem very vague, and maybe people want to sort of do, you know, what can you do tomorrow? But ultimately, what you can do tomorrow is work out who your key spokespeople are, what they can talk about, and are they ready to roll? And and then what? It, yeah, what is that insight? So you're providing something that. Uh, some of the big organizations can't do. Big organizations are, you know, work slowly. They've got to get uh, approval from all sorts of people. They've sometimes, if they're listed company, they've got to run it by their, you know, compliance team. It can take ages to get a quote. So as a small organization, that's budgetless. You can get a quote from them, basically. So that's, that's, my, that's my number one tip. That's brilliant. Um, thank you, Lucy. So, John, what would your... Uh, Tip, tips be? Um, as mentioned a couple of times, but uh, I'd find a unique angle. I would uh, make sure you follow up. Definitely make sure you follow up. Um, I'd be specific. Know your audience. Um, if you're going to, okay, if you've got a deadline, <laughs> you don't have to stick to it. I'd like you to stick to it. But if you don't stick to it, that's fine. But just tell me. Um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a week or two overdue, that is absolutely fine. We work in digital. We can move things around easy. But um, just tell me. So, so you know, uh, the the worst thing is if you um, say you'll submit a piece in a couple of weeks' time and then just go dark and and uh, and ghost me or whatever. So, um, if you're gonna be late, that is absolutely fine. But just let me know. That's, that's all I'd say. Okay. Can I just chip in there? Because I'm really interested in this follow-up thing because 
Um, I have to say that a lot of journalists, you know, I mean, there's some people, no names mentioned, whose answer phone message says, if you're a PR agent, hang up now. So what are you, I'm not going to say that is, it's a tech, tech journal, okay? You probably know who he is. Um, but could you just give us some advice about, and, and I will be doing this, by the way, so w watch yourself. Um, how could one follow up with you on something? Do you mean by email? Do you mean phoning? Uh, yeah, you can phone me. My, uh, my, my uh, phone is, uh, my phone number is in my signature and, uh, and you're welcome to phone me personally. I, I don't mind that. Some people might um, be inundated with phone calls and I understand why that's not, a method of communication some people like but that's absolutely fine uh, follow up with an email just say because because sometimes I will miss it and I genuinely will, will miss it uh, and I won't be sometimes I'll ignore it I've got to be honest but sometimes I will genuinely have missed it uh, so just follow up and say look did you did you see the beneath just follow just following up on this and it's, that's all I think just 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 an honest follow-up okay so Rob what would you add yeah, well, um, again, agree all, all of the above. Um, just a slightly different, uh, different one here. I'll say I'll cover this other thing is be immersive. Really immerse yourself in the topics that you are want to do PR around. Don't hop from one initiative to the next. So a bit less is more here. Do more PR activity around fewer initiatives, particularly if you're on a budget. I see a lot of press releases which are really bouncing from one subject to the next every other month or every other week. Um, and are they really sticking? I don't know. Um, I've got a couple of examples here. Um, perhaps a little bit unfair, but I'm going to do it anyway. If you look at what Leo has done around learning measurement, they're really, really known for, 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 for this subject. They're totally immersed in it. They, they sponsor research around it. They understand how it's done. Um, their executives are always talking about it. Um, one of their group companies is a, is a, is a learning analytics business. Uh, they, they understand XAPI and what makes um, learning measurement work and the technologies around it. Learning News did an interview with one of their consultants at Learning Tech um, in February. She was talking about it. They really are immersed in this. So when you think of learning measurement, you, know, you do think of, um, of Leo, and I'm sure that's done them a lot of good over the years. It's, and again, it comes back to this being authentic. It doesn't just come across as a PR campaign for them. It's authentic. It is the organization. It's very real for them. Um, so yeah, be immersive. Less less initiatives, less less campaigns, if you like, but but more commitment to the ones that you are involved in. Yeah. So it sounds like it's you know apart from there are some simple things you can do there. You can I, I like this idea, Lucy, that you can be a lot more agile if you're smaller because larger organisations are completely wrapped up in uh, process, aren't they? Around comms, they're just you know if you're lucky you might get someone who will go under the radar but then they're risking life and limb to put something out there that the corporate comms will get hold of and go what you're doing you've you, you know you kind of get, get gone against the policy so that idea that just being able to have people available you really know your stuff you've got an interesting line on it offer them up that's what you're saying isn't it just get um, them up yeah, absolutely. And have, you know, and, and no, I mean, I have, when, you, when Rob spoke about the grid for Canada, I also have um, what I, I labeled it the spokesperson matrix, because it sounds, you know, I've, I've uh, named it, but it, it's not really, I mean, it's basically, you know, what's the topic, who can speak on it, what language do they speak, you know, uh, yeah. what time zone are they in, when are they available? You know, so how do I get in touch with them, basically? And um, I think that you could do that and also it's it's very good because it's part of what you know what you can do in media training is you just kind of audition people you know a lot of people will say oh i can talk about like you know like you were saying rob measurement and then you start go you know you start just just you know you know test them out a little make sure they're saying something that's you know beyond the obvious you know we need to measure like, all right you know that's not going to do it so i think the matrix uh, can can work quite well for that yeah and i think the the idea also that you're, you're kind of developing that capability, aren't you, at that point? So yeah. people, people are understanding that a part of their role is actually talking about what they, this organisation does. Um, I mean, I, I have to say I love working with learning companies because, you know, trainers are show-offs. And a lot of times uh, you get people who were prepared to speak. I've also got um, engineering businesses, much more difficult to get somebody who's prepared to do an interview with a journalist. 
They're, they're very um, suspicious that they'll be misquoted. They, uh, they will only do something when they, you know, want to go back and have an hour long conversation about the history of engineering or whatever. So um, trainers make, make, you know, training businesses, the people who run training businesses, I think make some really good spokespeople. Um, can I just ask one question? One question here about opinion. So, you know, we've, I've heard the words credibility here. Um, and we're, we're liking the idea of moving away from news um, announcements, maybe, and, and more towards something a bit more, well, slightly different. And we were talking about opinion that, that has been raised. So my concern, is this a concern, actually, not as my concern, is this idea of credibility and opinion? So how do you how do you marry those two Absolutely. together? Absolutely. I mean, you know, first off, uh, you know, and, and look, I don't want to dominate this conversation, so we can move. I'll, I'll try and answer quickly. But um, yes, you need to. You know, you don't want to be talking about space, and you're you're working in a coffee shop, whatever. So it needs to make sense. You've got to have something. You know, I always say stats and stories. If you're going to right. talk about something, what are the stats you're going to use, and what are the stories you're going to call upon? You know, what are you going to, what are you going to draw from? So, so that's, that's really important, you know, you back it up, basically. Um, and yeah, and, and so yeah, that, that, that provides you with credibility, I yeah. think. You know. Yeah, okay, that's great. That's pick, pick a really good subject. On, 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 you know, it's, um, facts and opinion. If, it's, if it is in a news announcement, then the opinion will always be held within a quotation. It will never be outside of quotation. So um, the you need to know it's someone's opinion if it's in a press release if it's your your thoughts what you think about something it's it, it needs to be paraphrased as that otherwise it's 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 not opinion and it's it's uh, it's a fact yeah okay that's great um do we have any other questions around this i think um thank you everyone for chipping in with your questions and thoughts as we go um let's carry on so um Wait a minute. I'm doing my best with the notes. Right, okay, so, oh, bad practices. Surely not, surely there aren't bad PR practices out there. But um, I have to say one of the great things about the PR industry is it's full of so many mediocre people that if you're any good at it at all, if you're just reasonable, you can, be a, you can be a giant in this industry. <laughs> so, if anyone is thinking about retraining, do it now. Just don't um, come on my turf, okay? Just don't come on my turf. I, my professional nickname is uh, The Monster. So, I, um, and I'm sorry I said that in front of two journalists. But yeah, don't come on my turf. But yeah, go and retrain as a PR agent. You're mayor and monster. Lucy, I'm, I, I won't cross you, I promise. Um, so... John, come on, you were, you were teasing us a little earlier about the fact that you've got a few of these up your sleeve. Um, Where so to start? Why, why don't you kick off? What, what are the things we really should not be doing? Don't you dare. No, um, so, so I, I wouldn't, if I was a PR, don't mail merge, don't blanket carpet bomb everyone with the same press release. Uh, if you're gonna send me an email, use my name, my name is on the contact us page of trainingjournal.com. So don't ever say, don't ever start an email with hi there or anything like that. Use, use my name, be specific. If you don't, then it, I won't dismiss it out of hand because it could still be interesting, but uh, I will give it a lot less credence. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, no, um, there's, like Lucy said, there's a lot of uh, not great PRs out there. Um, <laughs> so so it, is, it is quite easy to be good at it. Um, hang on, I've got more. <clears throat> I would, so personally, for, for the way, the things that I publish on TJ, I, I'm not very interested in quotes by people, uh, and I, I'm not dismissing them, and I think they've got a place if that's the sort of thing that you publish. But personally, if, if I get a PR come to me with uh, a quote from someone about a certain issue, I, don't, I tend not to do anything with it, just because that's, not the sort of things that we publish. I, I do a news flash roundup every week, which so I feature Rob's stuff sometimes and, you know, and, and other stories that interest me, but I don't really feature comments in other stories from people, but I would not, but I, I don't know if that's something to avoid necessarily, Martin. I just say that this isn't appropriate for TJ. 
yeah. so it has its place um also if it i'm coming back to you know the the whole know your audience be specific thing i don't want i'm if i see something like what L and D can learn from the royal baby or something like that then it's immediately getting deleted so stories like that where they they're tied too much to a new story that is nothing to do with learning and development uh, then they'll they'll go straight in the bin to be honest um you know what learning and development can uh can learn from manchester city winning the premiership or you know what can coaches learn from you know etc etc it's fairly obvious when um it's opportunistic. So you need to, it, I understand the need to tie it to current affairs events if they're contextually correct or contextually relevant, but don't be too opportunistic because uh, it's just very transparently clickbaity rubbish and I won't publish anything like that. Um, I've probably got more, but I'll let someone else speak. Rob? Okay, yeah, the main one I've got here is, um, you know, it's what is news? It's it's not all about, don't see it all, all as all being about yourself. Um, it might be that you're promoting yourself, but news only becomes news when people understand how it impacts them. So, um, uh, you know, if you've won an award, you know, it's not that you've won an award that's important. It's what was the impact, why did you win that award? Um, if you appointed a new CEO, it's not just that you've appointed them, you know, what's the new direction going to be? What's the impact? Not just that someone new has joined. If you're sponsoring an event, why are you sponsoring that event? Um, and that often gets missed. I see quite a lot of press releases that just say what's happening. Well, that's not the news. The news is the impact of what's happening. And that is often missed. Brilliant. Sorry, while I remember, another thing that I don't think is necessarily something to avoid completely, but I think it's gradually being outmoded is the idea that a press release you know, an announcement goes live at a certain time. Um, with, with social media, I think that's a little bit difficult to control. There's elements of the narrative that you can control and should control with PR, but um, if you're saying we can't release this till midnight on Tuesday, you're gonna struggle. Uh, yeah, I agree. And embargoes like the exclusivity thing. You know, if it's embargoed, I mean, yeah, it's, it's slightly different if you're doing something that's um, for the city. But ultimately, that, that whole thing is, you know, come on, your journalist is going to see it on Twitter, for God's sake. Anything else, John? Hey, that, that was it for the moment, sorry, just while I remembered. So, and what does everyone else think? So, Jo, um, who works with John, she's um, just put in some stuff um, about agencies. Um, I, I wouldn't mind just chipping in uh, just a couple of things, and this really just re-endorses, I suppose, both of what Rob and John said. Um, what John said was really specifically, you know, uh, know the publication. There is, you know, so many times, you, that's why the press release just doesn't work. There's no way you can write a press release that's going to appeal to the Daily Telegraph, you know, uh, learning news and cross-stitch crazy. Yeah? So don't do it. It's just, I really think, you know, just look up the the publication read it um, get some favorites you know work out who your yeah. targets are and know them really intimately okay every thursday they seem to do this on you know they they do these lovely um, interviews with yeah. whatever you know people who are moving up the ladder whatever it is know know your stuff and i what i always say to my team is okay what's the headline what do you see how do you see this story so that they have to sort of think like a journalist they i i kind of basically say okay if i was going to open the newspaper what am i looking at yeah. It's not enough just, like you were saying, you win the award. That's, unless it's an Oscar, it's not going to do it. Yeah. So, um, so kind of try and, I mean, I, I know it sounds obvious to think like a journalist, but without knowing the publication, you might as well not hit send. Just go straight to junk. Yeah. Email. Okay. That's, I mean, it's, a, it's a, my um, experience of receiving um, or having conversations with PRs was that I, I think it's quite it's an interesting point about knowing the publication. You, you know what relationship do you have to those favourite publications? Because it, I think interestingly, more than ever, um, budgets are down on websites and um, magazines and you know gen across the board on media, unless you're getting into um, television and. Basically, 
the PRs are providing the content, aren't they, increasingly? I mean, that, is that not the case, um, Lucy? Do you not find that if you have a good... Uh, that would be that's too close to a trade secret. But yes, there is well, um, a lot of content that's been provided by people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that has always been the case. You know, but I think now, as you say, um, the, you know, the, press, the press is struggling against social media. For, for, you know, it's got to do something other than just alert people to breaking news yeah. because people are getting it in other ways. So therefore, the, the need for um, something that's, you know, just a, a got a little more thoughts behind it yeah. um, is, is where I think they fall in. And yes, uh, PR agents um, and PR agencies can, can help provide some content. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So it's 10 to 1 and our final area first steps for creating your pr campaign now who would like to who would like to start on this one take it go rob go on then um i mean something that we've not really picked up on um while we've been doing this and is is talk to the stakeholders uh, they're, they're going to hold you accountable at, at some point a couple of months down the line so so to get on board with uh, with what everyone's trying to achieve write your goals down it's important to have goals for your pr campaign um uh, you know, it might be that your stakeholders have got different goals to to what the pr goals are or the, what the pr teams give goals are so um get across the business um and have a shared view about what you're trying to achieve i say that'd be the first thing to do with uh, before you yep. start sending a press release out okay great and what sort of goals typically would make good goals for a campaign yeah. I mean, you know if your goal is to appear on the uh, on the, the news at 10 headlines you it's basically you're probably going to have to invade another country so we've got to be realistic with uh, with goals um what sort of coverage goals we want to get from it what sort of mind share goals we want to have um i don't know maybe that's a question for lucy lucy what what what, what are uh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you on goals, but I'd say to pull it back one step further, the, the press, um, you know, the media, God love them, you know, that's, that's the end result, but that's, that, that's, sorry, that's not the end result. The end result is the person you're trying to influence, which is the person buying, the decision maker. So, you know, if you're putting together your goals, you want to think, right, what is it? Are we, what are we trying to flog here? Or are we just trying to, you know, be known in the industry? What, really think about... Um, then you, you know, who is it you're trying to impress? Then you think about what they read, and then you put together your plan in order to approach the uh, publications that those people read. And and I spend a lot of time with um, at and with my clients, kind of wandering around, uh, asking what people read and what their clients read. And anytime I go to any um, uh, office, I'm always looking at like what what do people have on their screen? What's have they got a copy of? You know, the Metro beside them. You know, keep yeah. up to date. Just because something was a really important title once, um, it doesn't mean it stays it. I mean, look at the Sun versus Daily Mail. Fascinating, just what's happened in the last few years. You know, so um, I'd say, you know, start. But start. Sorry, start with the people. Who Who are you trying to influence? What's important yeah. to you? And then think about what they read and how they get their news. Yeah. John. Um, I would say be honest be persistent know your audience um if you're covering a topic which is fairly well worn or or fairly popular then think of a unique angle look at um look at what else to build on what lucy said what, what your clients are reading but also look at how that topic is being reported elsewhere so you don't do that you don't do the same thing essentially find something different find a different way of looking at the same thing because uh, that's what will make you stand out. Can I just pick up on something that um, earlier on we're talking, I was talking to Rob and um, something that occurred to me because we're, we're looking at um, potentially we're doing some rebranding and he mentioned Lucy's example of the place where you decide to do this stuff. And I was thinking, well, you know, but we're fairly small. We couldn't possibly do that. And then I was, then it's the penny dropped. Actually, why? Why can't you just, uh, on a fairly low budget, just go somewhere interesting and invite loads of key people? 
and just do something and say, here we are, this is what we're up to. Um, you know, that sort of sense of place and doing something physical, is that still important? Um, I, I had just a little word of caution. I love, I do love the enthusiasm there, Martin. Go, go, man, get your place. But um, just don't like to leave the office often. And you can, and there is nothing more agonising than standing in an empty press conference room, hoping, you know, ringing up somebody and saying, "Can you come in and just like make take some seats because this is like, excruciating." So the place has to be <laughs> that they want to go to, especially yeah. if it's if it's limited access. So if you can say, right, we're going to have a meeting, you know, it's MI5 and you can come down to the, you know, the basement or whatever. Yeah, you'd have journalists lining up, doesn't matter what magazine they work for, because they want to go there. But if you just say, would you like to come up to our office in Wokingham, it might be a bit tricky to get a gang. The other thing about groups is that some journalists, especially in the national press, don't like to get the news at the same time as everybody else, because... Uh, and I literally mean at the, I don't mean on the same day. I mean they don't want to they don't want to ask their questions in front of their rivals, so they yeah. prefer to have one to one meetings with people, which is why you know like um, you know for movies and stuff they'll do individuals rather than often you just see a lot of um, okay. people sitting in a, in a, in a bench. Yeah. So, so yeah. but but you can do all sorts of random stuff. I mean you know. Um, I have done some really, yeah, some, a lot of things with place as well. Things, you know, people leaping off um, uh, Trafalgar Square and, you know, Nelson Column and things like that. So, yes, depending on how brave you want to go. And the other thing is, what's the mix? So when we're talking about a campaign, what is the social media, you know, articles in media mix? You know, where, how, do you, how do you plan what, what you should be doing where? totally goes back to, all, to to the person you're trying to influence you know if you're looking at um influencing the city and the ceo or the the you know the c-suite then maybe you know snapchat's not going to be your number one target uh go back to the individual that you're trying to uh, impress and then think what they read and that also and when i would say read i mean social media i mean everything where they get where they get their info from and um and then that's how, that's how you build it up so, you know, I think anybody who says to you, oh, it needs to be 50% of this, 50% of this, the lines are blurred between what is a blog, what is a, yeah. an online title, what moves into social media, and et cetera. Yeah. So, um, don't, don't worry about uh, too much about that, that break. Just, you know, just do enough to make, to make an impact to the people you want to make an impact to. Yeah. Brilliant. So, is there anything else we would add there? I think that's... a. Uh... We've, I'm just, we've got four minutes left, so I'd like to try and keep it to time. So is there anything else? If, if, I don't know if anyone else has got any other questions, um, but I'd like to think we've covered a lot of ground there. Um, and anything else any of the panel would add in? I think we... I suppose, can I, I know I've, I've spoken a lot here, so apologies, but... Uh, oh, sorry, Rob. I'll come quiet. Some... Okay, okay, I'll go. Um, one of the ones I've got is, um, is is be a good writer. You know, so much about PR is 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 writing. You know, whether it's writing a new release or an email or a social post or a video script, we have to be good writers. And writing isn't something that we're not born good writers. It's something that you learn and it's something that you maintain as a skill. So um, yeah, uh, invest in being a good writer. I mean, an example I can give you there is, is um, you know, writing headlines. I have a process for writing headlines. Um, we make a list of all the bullet, po you know, bullet point, all the key points in a story. Yeah. Uh, and for each of those, I ask who cares and why do they care for each of those points. And the one that stands out as being the, the, the best answer to that is usually the headline. Um, so it's a, it's a process. You know, it's, it's um, something you maintain and work through it's not just it doesn't happen by accident yeah I think the I think that's a very good point actually I mean a lot of our work is you know we, we edit other people's work and I used to be a sub editor many many years ago you know so I used to have to edit journalists work before it went into uh, was published and it's quite extraordinary even with journalists you know the quality of the writing and I, I, I don't know it's a personal thing, but the, I see a lot of not very good quality writing. 
It just seems to be accepted. And I think a, ta a part of that is the fact it's all, um, you know, anyone can publish anything at any time. So, and some of it can be very good, but a lot of it um, potentially isn't. So I, I like that. Um, sorry, Lucy, were you going to add something in? Um, I suppose I was just going to say, you know, the, the PR folk, you know, we stand as kind of interpreters between the business and the um, journalist. And it works both ways. I mean, sometimes I'm sure the, um, the journalists think we're, you know, gatekeepers or whatever when we're trying to protect someone. But the, the, it's important to, if you're going to be an interpreter, you need to know both languages. You know, know your own business really well, you know, and ask questions of it so that you, you get to grips with how it works and therefore what's important to it and also know how the press works and then you can interpret you know when you're asked a question by a journalist you can work out how to answer it in a way that's going to best yeah. represent the company and when you're putting together a plan you can put together one that, that serves the journalist purpose but also um, you know it is, is, is worthwhile uh, worth, worth a good waste of, not a waste of time for, for, the, yeah. for your company. Just finally, there's a question from Fiona here about um, a company she works with wants to make announcements on social media two weeks before they put out the press release. That is a terrible idea. I'm literally going to say that now, 100% no. I mean, why would anyone want to look at a press release that's already out, you know, that my son is sharing on, on Facebook or on Snapchat or whatever? No, um, I could say that there may be a reason to do it. Some people put press releases on their news sites online, um, you know, on their website in order to, um, you know, so they've got a long list of things. Sometimes it almost becomes a bit of an about us. Uh, so it's not really a press release. It's more just like background. But I cannot think of any reason, anyone who does, please email me at lucy at wordville.net. I can't think of any reason to do it. Brilliant. Any other final words? I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Lucy, John and Rob for providing just amazing insights. I feel very um, lucky that we've had you all together and you've agreed to do this. And I really wanted to say thank you to everyone who's um, on the call and for your participation. I hope you found um, some, got some useful information out of this, some useful tips. Um, it all feels very achievable to me from what everyone has said actually some just some basics um, that we can probably start doing um, especially if you're a smaller business so yeah what we're going to do is we are going to do the recording and we will share that and um, we'll do a we'll write up a report and send that out to everyone as well and I will give you the details of all our panelists at, so you can um, be in touch with them directly if you would like to be um, I think we, one last thing is that just so that you know this, I think this is turning into a bit of a series of webinars. So we, we did one before this and the next one is probably going to be on um, brand differentiation in the market. So I'll let you know about that um, as and when we've pulled that together. But thank you, dear panellists. That was really, really good. And thank you all for being on the call and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.